time out for Anthony Martial. Rafael Varane's situation is still there, there. Welcome to the United Hotspot. This is the Transfer Corner. My name is Webb, and I'm here to give it to you. Do remember as well, we've got a big one coming up in the FA Cup. I don't remember the last time we played the FA Cup game. It's been a while, hasn't it? But Wigan is the next either casualty or we could be their next victim. Let's get into it. Now, Anthony Martial's talk has been top of Manchester United. And uh, people have had started speculating that Martial could surprisingly be given a contract extension. Now, this is the, the fact. Man United has not said anything like that. Anthony Martial's situation is still being discussed and they are yet to come to a final decision to what exactly is going to be done. So uh, the thing is, Martial's contract runs out on the 30th of June and uh, United had made it clear before, and I told you here on the United Hotspot that they're not going to be extending his contract with the club. How are you, boss? Yeah, and uh, you know, but uh, what uh, exactly United wants to do now is to try and find a potential buyer for Anthony Marshall this January. If they can't get a buyer, the idea is to see him run out his contract and on the 30th of June, they release him for free. Now, the word free and players at Man United might not sound good for anyone because the reality is we do need money. We are in a sell to buy situation. If we are going to buy any of the so many players we have, we've been linked with, I don't think any club has been linked to more players than Man United. I don't think any club has ever been linked to more players than United anyway. So uh, if we are going to buy any of those so many players, the Saku Hirasis of this world, we have got to sell. We don't have money, guys. And Anthony Marshall could have been one of the guys, obviously, we expected to sell this January. But the reality is, if you're the owner of any club, if you're the manager of any club, would be looking to buy Anthony Marshall. Let's be honest about it. So the thing is, we could stay, we could be forced to stay with Marshall until the end of the season and see him go on a free. Now, that is not something we'd love to see. Marshall joined United in 2015 for 50 million pounds. That was a record fee for a teenager back then. He has scored 63 goals in those so many years. The, since 2020-2021 season, he has scored only about, what, 18 goals? So you can imagine how bad his performance has been for United. So how exactly are we going to get rid of him and his £250,000 per week is a debate that everyone wants to get into. But speaking of getting rid of players, there is one we are trying to get rid of, but we know we need him. His name is Rafael Varen. So like the boss had confirmed, uh, we've been also holding talks with Rafael Varen. And for his case, United is clear. We want to keep you, but on different terms, reduced terms to be precise. Now, Varen up to now is yet to agree on this. So we are hoping that we get some money. United has placed a 30 million pounds price tag on Rafael Varen. And we are hoping that maybe a club in Saudi would come for him. The only, again, issue would be Varen not working to, wanting to go to Saudi. So that means if Varen doesn't have the heart of Man United, and he's an experienced player, he can certainly see that Man United needs money. And we can get some 30 millions from him because that's what we've placed on him. He can, he can, if he doesn't have the heart for the club, he can say, even if Saudi comes, I'll, I'll eat it hard and, I'll, and uh, I'll nasa all these clubs that would want him from Saudi. He would say no because as a player, he's got to want to go to the club you want to sell him to. So, and he's a senior player. He should be respected. You can't force him the way United forced Cleverley to go to Aston Villa on loan. Yet Everton that wanted him than he also wanted was offering money. So for Varen, it's a whole different situation. Now, that's where we are. Now, so Varen, we have placed 30 million pounds on him, but we are hoping someone signs him. If they don't, we could still keep him until the 30th of June when his contract runs out. We don't trigger an extension and we lose him for free. That wouldn't be the worst thing to happen, would it? So yeah, and I know some of you are thinking, where is Webb? Where on earth is Webb this time? Well, I am home. Well, this is my village here. Yeah, you can have a look at my village. Yeah, you see the beautiful ladies in my village and the beautiful, you know, trees, the green, you know, this is my, my village where I grew up. So yeah, respect me. So exactly that's what uh, Man United is all about. Now, away from that, let's talk Jadon Sancho as we keep walking. So Jadon Sancho as well is hoping to join Borussia Dortmund before the end of this weekend in Mabela, before, of course, going on to join them back on loan from Manchester United. The loan situation for Sancho has been taking a while uh, because United has been you know, trying to find the best way of benefiting from this loan. So a total of about £4 million might come United's way. 
and probably a big boost considering the fact that this guy has not been playing for Man United for a long time. They spent 72 million pounds on him. He's uh, been, you know, banished from the club. Getting four million pounds, you know, and getting his wages not paid by us for me, I think, would be a decent bargain. I'm not sure. I probably it's John Mata and Co who are handling this, but uh, I think for me it's a good thing that Jeron Sancho is going to be playing football again. He had already packed his bags, excited to go back and play football, step on the pitch, and yeah, who knows what could happen? Eric Ten Hag, who knows? Might not stay for so long. Might, guys. I'm not saying and this is not what I'm predicting. I, I hope it works out for Ten Hag and Sajim and his team. But who knows what could happen? But that's the Jadon Sancho situation. Now, Michael Olise, another player United has been linked with in the summer. So here's the thing Manchester United are serious about Michael Olise. This Riyad Mahrez look alike, not in terms of appearance, but in terms of play. So Riyad Mahrez play alike. Let me put it that way. So Man United are hoping that because they are yet to be informed of how much money Crystal Palace had, had placed in his you know, buyout clause. So United are still waiting, but uh, it's serious that United want to find a winger. And I still don't understand why they don't talk about Mason Greenwood, because if you ask me, Greenwood is probably better than, uh, than um, Michael Olise from Crystal Palace. So why they don't talk about him, again, you can uh, you fear of the unknown and everything. But Sajim and his team are clear that they do want to do things their way. And they are clear they do want to give a chance to every player to either fail, prove themselves, and you know, and stay or fail and go. So Mason Greenwood cannot be, you know, I mean, cannot be scapegoated. Every player has got to work for their own, and Greenwood as well is among the players we've got. So that's the situation with Manchester United. So my call is still on the radar, top on the radar, by the way. But for me, I'll still insist. Why talk about Olise? when you've got Mason Greenwood. Wow, it's a beautiful sky up here. Show it to them. Look at that sky. Beautiful, bright, and now it's getting, it's coming towards seven, or there about. But look at how beautiful this is. Anyhow, this beauty perhaps is a sign that Manchester United could have a beautiful season. We started the year, I think, uh, with some bit of positivity, because we saw Sir Jim uh, at Carrington, and we saw images of him and Eric Ten Hag, and there was a bit of uh, hope that maybe the conversations were good because of the smiles they were wearing. I told you of how it was all smiles after that meeting with the staff. And by the way, Sir Jim made it clear, and I said it here when he was confirmed, guys, I said it to you that I don't think really this guy at 71, the richest man in the UK, is looking at coming and taking the burden of football operations at Man United to, to, to make money. I don't think really United, however big it is, ah, beautiful. Just a body, and I can't write that thing by the way. Anyway, so, but Sir Jim does, I don't think he's really for money. I don't think, yes, he's a businessman, and obviously will make money with the 25%, and you know, the 1.3 billion he put in, but I honestly don't think his biggest drive was money, because I don't think this Man United and this 25% is going to add so much on his wealth. So, he said it to the staff that for him, he's not here to make money, to enjoy profits. He is at Manchester United because he supports the club. Let me ask this guy. How are you, sir? No, Tell me you support Man United. No, no. Oh, please. Which team? Barca. Barcelona. Mm. Uh, would, you, would you want Greenwood? What? Greenwood at Barcelona. Mason Greenwood. Who is better? He's better than... He's not a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. Mm. You'd want to see him at Barca. Yeah, because I see I see him there in the league, but he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Mm. You'd want to see him at Barca. Yeah. These guys want to take our guy, guys. These guys want to take our guy. I'm done, man. We are not selling you a player. Mm. It's not happening unless you're giving us 200 million. Uh, we are not giving you green. It's not worth it, but it's not worth it. maybe like uh, 45, 40, 45 million mm -hmm. for Greenwood. Yes. When Anthony dos Santos, you know Anthony yes, of yes. Manu, when he's worth 85, uh, he was just hyped, but he didn't. He was also not worth that money exactly. Mm. So. Greenwood can't be worth, man. This guy is disrespecting our player. No, I'm done with this video. Bye. I'm out, guys. Oh, no, 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 you, man. No, 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 no. I'm out.